Welcome to P's to your next note on volume. Uh, today's goal, I can find the volume of cones and spheres. So we're working on the volume of cones and spheres and if you haven't done so already, I want you to watch the demo video that's linked to in your flipped classroom. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, just shut this one off and go watch it. I mean it, I'm serious. Shut this one off, go watch it, then come back and watch this one. It's only a minute long, it'll only take a minute. So, carrying on, hope you went and watched it. Um, the video demonstration showed basically that three cones can fit into a single cylinder. So that means that if I divide by a, a cylinder by three, I get the volume of the cone if, as long as it has the same base and the same height as the cylinder. So, Basically, that gives us a formula for finding the volume of a cone. And here it is. Volume equals area of the base times the height, all divided by 3, because of course the volume of a cylinder was area of the base times the height, same as any kind of prism. Or, um, we can remember the fact that the bottom is actually a circle, and so this area of the base can be replaced by pi r squared, which is the area of the circle. And of course the height is the distance from the center of the base right to the tip of the point on the cone. So, carrying on. Um, let's look at example one. A cylinder has a volume of 333 cubic meters. What is the volume of a cone that has the same base and height? Well, we just found out that there are three cones in one cylinder. So if I take this cylinder and split it into three, I'll get the volume of the cone. So I need to do 333 divided by three, which gives me 111 cubic meters, and that will be the volume of the cone. Okay, next thing, we're going to find the volume of this cone. Uh, volume equals pi r squared h, that's the volume of a cylinder, and then I have to divide it by 3 because this is a cone, it comes to a point. So we do pi uh, times, so we've got pi, the radius here is going to be half of this because this is pointing to all the way across, so it tells me that that is 4. So the radius must be 2, so I'm going to square it. And then the height, of course, goes from the center of the base all the way to the tip of the point. So that is that 6 inches that's marked on there, all divided by 3. Now I'm going to do the numbers that I can do. 2 squared is 4, times 6 is 24. There's still that pi on top and there's still that divide by 3 in the bottom. And of course, 24 divided by 3 is easy to do. That's just 8. So I end up getting 8 times pi. And 8 times pi gives us a volume of 25. Uh, 8 times pi is 25.1. And of course, this is measured in inches, and since it's volume, it's going to be cubic inches. Next one. A conveyor belt at a gravel pit drops sand so that it forms a pile in roughly the shape of a cone. So there's our cone. It's got a height, and it's got a radius. Uh, the radius increases at a rate of 50 centimeters per minute. And the height increases at a rate of 20 centimeters per minute. If the conveyor is turned on and left to run for an hour, what volume of sand is moved to the pile? So if the radius is increasing at 50 centimeters per minute, uh, after an hour, which is 60 minutes, we need to do 50 times 60, which equals 3,000 centimeters and that's going to be the radius. That's a lot, so let's actually change it into 30 meters. Uh, now the height 
it increases at a rate of 20 centimeters, so 20. Uh, we're going to multiply that by 60, which gives me 1,200. And of course, that's going to be 12 meters. Now, the way I went from centimeters to meters is I just divided by 100 because I know there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Now, let's go volume equals 4, sorry, volume equals pi r squared h over uh, 3 because it's a cone, so we have to divide by 3. So we've got pi. R in this case is 30, so pi 30 squared times h, which is 12, divided by 3. So on top, I get 900, because 900 is 30 squared, times 12 gives me 10,800. That has to be multiplied by pi and then the whole thing divided by 3. So now let's just type that into our calculator. 10,800 times pi divided by 3 is 11,309.73. And, um, and again, this is in meters, so that's in cubic meters. That is a lot of dirt or sand. Uh, since this was stated in the in words, we should answer in words and say, therefore, it will move 11,309.73 cubic meters of sand in an hour. All right, now we're going to talk about volume of a sphere. And for volume of a sphere, and a sphere, of course, is a ball shape, I'm just going to give you the formula. So here's our ball shape. The only thing that we can measure on a ball is the radius. And volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Or a little easier to type in our calculator is if we do the numerator first and say it's 4 pi r cubed all divided by 3. So this second one here is the one that's a little bit easier to type into the calculator. Um, you don't have to worry about what the fraction actually means. So for example number four, it asks us what the volume is of this given sphere. So for volume, we go 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. In this case, r is 7, so we do 4 pi. We have to take 7 and cube it and divide by 3. So let's figure out what 7 cubed actually is. 7 cubed is 343. And then I can multiply it by this 4, too, which gives me 1,372. Uh, that pi is still there, divided by 3. Now I'm just going to type this into the calculator. I'm going to do 1,372 times pi, and then divided by 3. So 1372 times pi divided by 3 is 1436. Uh, 0.76. This was measured in centimeters, and since it's volume, it's going to be cubic centimeters, so I need to make that, have that cube there. Last question. The giving pic given picture is of the Civil Rights Institute in Birmingham, Alabama. If the walls of the cylinder, this semi-spherical roof rests on are 15 feet high, what is the volume of the building? And then it asks about air conditioning, which we'll worry about later. So we've got two parts here. We've got the roof, which is semi-spherical, and we've got the base, which is a cylinder. Well, let's find the cylinder first. That's pretty straightforward. So we're going to go the volume of the base, in this case, uh, is a cylinder. So cylinders are pi r squared h. And so we've got pi r in this case is 25.3, as shown in the diagram. We've got to square that, and the height, of course, is 15 feet. 
Now we're going to plug that into our calculator. What's 25.3 squared? 25.3 squared is 640. 640.09. decimal And then we multiply that by 15. Now let's just put this all into our calculator. Pi times 640.09 times 15 gives us 30,163.53. Now, for the semi-spherical base or roof, uh, we're going to go the volume of the roof equals, well, it's only going to be half of 4 pi r cubed all divided by 3. This is the formula we had in the last one. Uh, I'm going to adjust it slightly though because I can actually multiply these fractions. I multiply the numerator by 1, I multiply the denominator by 2. So it actually gives us 4 pi r cubed divided by 6. So now I can just plug in my numbers here. 4 times pi, r in this case is 25.3 and of course we have to cube it and it's all divided by 6. So the volume of the roof end up, ends up being 33,917.6. Now we've got the base and the roof so we need to add them together. Uh, so total volume, I'm going to do that over here, total volume equals those two things added together, 30,163.53 plus 33,917.2 for a grand total of, for a grand total of 64,000 80.73 and that it was measured in feet and of course it's volume so it has to be cubed. Now the second part says if an air conditioning unit moves 300 cubic feet of air per minute how long would it take to circulate all of the air inside this building? Well 300 per minute if I divide this number by 300 I'll get how many minutes it takes. So 64,080 0.73 divided by 3 hundred gives us 213.6 minutes. Now if you want that in hours, divide it by 60 and it's th 3 point five six hours. Now please note that that does not mean three hours and fifty six minutes. It means approximately three and a half hours. If I want to know how many minutes, I'm going to take that point five six and I'm just going to do a little aside over here. Um, it's three total hours because of that three out front and then point five six of another hour. So the way I do that is I go 0 0.56 times 60 and that will tell me how many minutes it is. So 0 0.56 times 60 gives us 33.6 or 34 minutes. So it's 3 hours 34 minutes. And that concludes our lesson for today.